Hello and welcome back. In today's video, I will share four ways on how you can create a cutout text effect as shown. Let's start from scratch by removing the current layers, followed by adding a text, which I will paste from the clipboard. Also, let's add a rectangle. Our text is not visible right now, so let's move it above the rectangle and change its color to white. Excellent! So the first method of creating a cutout text, which also is the less flexible method, is by using pixel masks. I can select the pixels from the text by command clicking on the text layer. As you see, I now have a selection of the text. If I go to the rectangle and press the mask button in the layers panel, Affinity will create a mask from the selection to our rectangle. If I hide the text layer, we can see the masked rectangle. Before moving on, let me deselect the selection by pressing the keyboard shortcut Command D. As you notice, this is exactly the opposite of what we want. To get the cut out effect, we can easily invert the mask by pressing the keyboard shortcut Command I. We now have the cutout we're looking for. I can still modify the rectangle. For example, change its color. However, we can no longer change the text, as this is now a pixel mask. The only way of changing the text is by removing the mask and creating a new mask from a new piece of text. So, this is not very flexible. Let's move on to the next method, which is the preferred way if you're working with curved layers. I will first undo a couple of steps with the keyboard shortcut Command Z until I'm back at the state where we have our starting text and rectangle. After I select the rectangle and the text, I will use the geometry menu from the layers menu. As both are curves, I can use the subtract function. Just make sure the text is above the rectangle. With the subtract method, the top layer will be subtracted from the lower layer. In order to keep things editable, we can press and hold the Option key, which will apply the geometry as a compound action. You notice when I press the Option key, the word Compound has been added in the menu. After I apply the Compound Subtract, Affinity has created a compound layer. If we open it up, we have our text with a geometry action and the rectangle below to which the geometry action has been applied to, which results in exactly what we're looking for. The biggest advantage of this method is that the curves in the compound can be modified. For example, I can still change the text. Or I can change the size of the rectangle. One thing to keep in mind with compound layers is that this is a new object and does not behave like a group. The child layers, in this case, the text and the rectangle, define how it's made up. If you want to change the color, for example, modifying the color of a child layer has no effect. As you can see, I'm trying to add a gradient to the rectangle, but it has no effect. I need to select the compound itself and then apply the change. So let me apply the gradient to it and make the composition a bit more interesting. Wonderful. Let's have a look at the third method, which is the most flexible method to apply a cutout effect. I will copy and paste the rectangle together with the text to the top of the layer stack. So we have our two starting objects again. This time, I'm going to add the text as a clipping child to the rectangle by dragging and dropping it on the rectangle layer's title. Perfect. To have the text cut out from the rectangle, we can use the Erase Blend mode. For Photoshop users among us, this is called Knockout in Photoshop, which you can find under the layer options. As you have guessed, the text is erased from the rectangle and it is only erased from the rectangle as it has been clipped to the rectangle. Let me change the fill to a gradient to get a nice effect. 
There are two major advantages of using this method. First, we can apply filters to the cutout element. Let me demonstrate that. I can add a Gaussian blur to the text and the cutout will be blurred. If I do the same for the text layer in the compound, you notice the Gaussian blur has no effect. In the child layers of a compound, pixel manipulations have no effect. Let's remove the Gaussian blur. The second advantage of this method is that it can also be applied to pixel or image layers. I will add a light leak image to the composition, which as you can see is a pixel layer. Let me copy and paste the text. It is still in erase blend mode and this is why it cuts out the whole image. Just for clarity, the geometry functions do not work. As I have mentioned, this works only with curve layers. However, when I move the text as a clipping child to the image, it cuts out the text from the image. Let me remove the text in erase blend mode and share with you the last method, which is using a compound layer as a mask. So basically, you can make your cutout using curves and use the resulting compound as a mask. So, here I have the compound layer we created earlier. I can now drag and drop this on the thumbnail of the image layer and it becomes a mask for that image. As you might remember, the compound has a gradient going from black to transparent. This is why the light leak image is not showing completely. If I change the color of the compound to black with 100% opacity, we get the cutout without the gradient. We cannot directly modify the text, but if we move the compound out as a mask, the compound layer gets restored and I can open up its child layers. This allows me to adjust the text. And when I'm done, I can move it back as a mask. Not very ideal, but still workable and definitely useful, especially if you have created a complex curve. Let's move the compound back to its original position. I'll make a duplicate of the text with Erase Blend mode and move this as a child to the Lined Leak image, so we get the cutout in there. Time to get a bit creative. Most of the time, you would use the Screen Blend mode with Light Leaks and Lens Flares. So let's set its Blend mode to Screen. Not bad. Let me also enable the layer below with the black gradient and the text cutout. As this darkened the image, the light leak is more prominent as there is more to lighten. Here is another suggestion for you to use with light leaks. Instead of using screen, you can use the add blend mode and adjust the blend ranges as shown. This usually creates a more dramatic effect. Let me turn on and off the light leak layer to notice the effect better. Pretty amazing. I can lower the opacity a bit to dim down the effect. I'm also going to dim down the black gradient layer below by lowering its opacity. To finish up, I will add a fill layer and set its color to a nice strong pink. Then I'm going to blend this pink layer with the image using Linear Burn. The effect is a bit too much, so let me lower its opacity. I want the pink color to affect only the image and not the light leak, so I'm going to move it below the light leak layer. To bring contrast to the text, let's move the text in Erase Blend mode to the pink layer. So the text is removed from the pink layer allowing the text to show the original color. A bit of fine tuning on the opacity of the black gradient and this looks about right. To finish up, let's add a curves adjustment to bring more contrast by adjusting the master channel. As the text is mainly blue, I think it would be good to adjust the blue channel to increase the blue, which looks much better. If you're looking for a more subtle text effect, we can disable the text cutout in the pink layer. Also not bad. Again, depends on what you want to achieve. 
If the text is important, I would turn it on. Keep in mind that you can use multiple layers with Erase Blend Mode to create the cutouts. And they don't have to be text only. Let me demonstrate what I mean. For the sake of time, let me paste an image and two curves. As you see, the curves have been already set up by me, so they fit the lenses nicely. I can now move both of these curves as clipping childs and apply the Erase Blend Mode. Both of them will cut out from their parent and you get this nice effect where the glasses are showing the underlaying layers. Pretty cool. Before I leave you, let me adjust the underlaying layers a bit so it will work with the current image. First, let's adjust the fill color. Instead of pink, let's go for yellow. This already looks much better. To make it more realistic, we need to do two more things. First, we need to fix the perspective of the city image, so it's in alignment with the perspective of the glasses. We can do this by adding a live perspective filter. Usually, zooming out during this process will give you a better overview. Just move around until it feels natural. The second thing we need to do is to fix the focus. The image in the left lens should be out of focus. We can achieve this by adding a live Gaussian blur filter just below the top image, so it blurs everything beneath. This looks about right. I'm now going to invert the mask of the Gaussian blur by using the keyboard shortcut command I so it's no longer applied. With a white brush, I can paint in back the blur to the left lens. And with a grayish brush, I will also adjust the right lens a bit. So it also gets a little bit of blur. I'm not very happy with the color. Let me turn off the curves layer we used earlier, which actually added the blue. That looks much better. Let's zoom out quite a bit to see how that looks. I'm going to add a curves layer again and do something about the greens and add a bit of red. Yep, this looks about right for now. Anyway, it was a fun video again and I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much again for watching. Keep safe and until next time.